So this is, uh, this is actually the first time that I'm going to give a presentation anything like this. And uh, Rand sent an email around yesterday with some tips uh, on what makes a good presentation. I think I broke most of them. Um, his line was, bullet points kill kittens. Um, and so hopefully, I have a few bullet points in here. I personally like sort of slides with takeaways on them. Um, but like I said, it's the first time I've given this um, before, and I'm hoping it's closer to like euthanasia of kittens than like ax murdering. Um, but let me know what you think in the comments, because I, I, I really do like to hear what people's feedback is. So um, here is basically what I'm going to be talking about, um, pain points with Google Places. These are probably the most common emails that I get or comments on my blog or on you know, Mike Blumenthal's blog or other blogs in the space that I see um, related to Google Places. Um, issues around verification, uh, people who see their traffic, their organic search traffic declining and wondering where it's going. Um, bad or missing data, uh, either showing up or not showing up in Google Places. Um, competitive research, you may have seen last week there was a huge, whoops, huge shift uh, in the information that Google actually displays on Place pages. Um, so I'll talk about sort of ways around that. Um, if you're a big brand, you've probably been um, pretty pissed that small businesses, guys operating out of the back of their garage, are outranking you because of local. Um, that's no longer an excuse, and I'll show you why. Um, how to overcome the centroid bias. Uh, so if you haven't heard this term centroid before, I'll explain what it is in, in about 30 minutes. And then the big one, uh, you know, what do I do if I don't have any physical locations? What are my options in local? So that's probably what I want to try to cover today um, in the next 40 minutes or so. And starting out, verification and management. So this is like, I don't even know how many times uh, people have asked me, when is Google going to come out with a multi-client center to manage you know, a bunch of different places uh, at, at once uh, if you're an agency? Um, we've been waiting a long time, and you're going to keep waiting. Um, Jeff Huber, this is Jeff down here in the green background. Um, he's just been uh, named as sort of like the local product monetizer guy at Google. I don't know what his exact title is. Um, and Google also just rolled out AdWords Express uh, to replace Boost. So it signals that they're sort of moving in this direction of allowing agencies to manage um, a lot of accounts at once. But it really hasn't been their focus. They're much more about going direct to the small businesses. And so if you're an agency, you're just going to have to suck it up if you're dealing with Google. Um, so the solution is spend all your money with other places um, until they recognize, hey, this is a major market that we're missing out on. Um, and I'm dead serious about that. They, Google is, has a tin ear when it comes to this kind of stuff. Um, and so if they know that they're losing money, if they see Facebook doing really well or Foursquare doing really, really well, which they are um, with, with sort of multiple management systems, um, they might actually start to try to implement it. Second thing is I've heard from some people that they've had difficulty getting a bulk upload verified. Um, so here are the best practices for doing that. Number one thing, each listing has to have its own phone number. Google does not want any call, summer, call center numbers in their places index. Um, they've got to be captive locations, so if you're like a distributor and you're trying to claim the listings of a bunch of your resellers, um, that's probably not going to work unless they only sell your products. Uh, your Google account email top level domain, this is a big one. Um, in order to get verified, it, it's got to be something at domainname.com uh, as your Google account, and that's got to match the domainname.com that you're listing for each of the place pages. Um, I think it's a best practice, it's not required. Uh, to submit a unique landing page for each location rather than just the home page. I'll talk about reasons why that is later on. Um, and luckily now, the verification request is now embedded in the upload process. So it used to be impossible to find the link, but if you haven't tried it in a while, it's now right in like step, uh, step three of the process. You've got to wait probably 30 or 45 days usually before Google approves you, um, but you absolutely have to go through this verification process. Don't ignore it. Um, a, an unverified bulk upload is basically worthless. Once you've got those locations in there, I really recommend that you make any changes uh, you know, on a, like a quarterly basis or a monthly basis, whatever. Do those manually. Um, don't just re-upload things. Um, Google has had a lot of trouble sort of losing, losing new listings in the past uh, and sort of overwriting old listings um, and, and you know, potentially losing reviews associated with those listings, et cetera. So make any changes. Uh, once you've got those locations verified, make those changes manually. So hopefully those are some best practices if you've been having trouble um, getting a client account verified. It can't be something coming from the agency. It has to be from the client's domain name. Declining traffic. A lot of sites have seen uh, a drop off in traffic, obviously. Um, I wouldn't necessarily uh, chalk that up as you're losing business. Um, Google is just continuing to devour more and more traffic for itself. Um, Aaron Wall blogged about this, I think, last fall uh, in a great post that he just called localization. 
Um, it's not necessarily, well, I forgot about this slide. Um, so obviously, we'll see where this goes with all of the ongoing antitrust stuff uh, happening against Google. Um, but this is not necessarily a bad thing if you're a small business marketer. Um, keep in mind, a lot of small business websites are very poorly optimized or uh, hard to edit. You know, they don't know what their uh, username and password is for their registrar, things like that. Um, and so the place page actually can offer a pretty rich experience um, and you know, get people going to that business uh, even without actually visiting their website. Obviously, I know it's bad if you're an enterprise uh, company. You want to be able to control that conversion experience 100%, but Google is just, you know, it, it's, it's their mindset that they want um, these place pages to really be uh, the default sort of central location for as much business information uh, as they can come up with. And one of the main reasons for that is mobile devices. So a place page in general is, is optimized to load quickly on mobile um, and obviously will be included in the Places app um, for, for Google. Uh, the other thing is uh, mobile searching now with voice search uh, is going to be returning place page information, not website information. Um, and so there's going to be a lot of people who are not even visiting a website um, who are you know, potentially becoming a conversion point for you. Product search is getting more and more localized. Um, you may have seen in the last probably four or five months um, little red push pins for nearby locations for certain, um, certain products, and I wouldn't ignore that uh, as a conversion point as well. This is an old screenshot. I wish I could figure out the red thing. Maybe this is it. Nope. Um, anyway, this is an old screenshot. Uh, the new uh, place inter interface upgrade uh, removed these snippets, but you can see that Google is trying to show as much information um, about a business as they can on this place page before you even get to a website. And so while these have gone away for the time being, I have a feeling as hot pot, former hot pot now places, uh, reviews become more and more um, mainstream that we'll start to see those, these, these snippets and these scorecards replaced by hot pot uh, ratings rather than third party. Um, and you can see that Google's already tracking um, number of clicks for directions, number of impressions for place pages. Um, so these kinds of things are signals to Google that, hey, um, you know, people are, people are engaging with this business even before going to a website. You can see hotels. Uh, you can now book right from a place page. Uh, and Mike Blumenthal has speculated that Google Calendar will soon be up, uh, integrated uh, at some point with place pages to allow for appointment booking. So again, if you're losing a bunch of traffic um, from Google Places, I wouldn't necessarily see it as a bad thing. Um, you've just got to make sure that that place page ranks really, really well. Um, so keep in mind all these other possible conversion points for people rather than just on your website. All right, if you've got bad or missing data, um, this is something uh, that I've you know, gotten a lot of emails and seen a lot of, uh, lot of articles in the last couple days about uh, with relation to this new place page uh, interface. I personally don't think that the importance of the local ecosystem is changing anytime soon. Um, so a lot of you saw this slide last year when I presented it, um, but I just want to go over this in case you haven't seen it before in, in a little bit of detail. So basically, Google Places you know, has to get its business information from other places around the web. Google doesn't just have this native index, didn't just have this native index of places when they launched Maps in 2004, 2005. Um, and so they really went around and they said, okay, well, who's got the best data sets um, for small businesses? And there's really three big ones in the USA. Um, Local Ease on the left, Info Group in the middle, and Axiom to some extent, although their data set is a little bit more out of date um, than the other two guys. So, Google went around, and obviously the Yellow Pages companies as well um, have really good business data. So Google went around and basically either bought data sets from these guys, licensed them, scraped them, et cetera, um, to try to pull in as much information about a business into a cluster uh, about that business as they could. Um, and then even if they weren't getting direct feeds from all these websites, again, they were going around and they still are going around and crawling all these websites to see, okay, well, who, what business information is out there that we can associate into one cluster? Uh, about a particular business. So your name, address, and your phone number, your business name, address, phone number, uh, Gib Olander from Local East calls it NAP. That's basically your thumbprint if you're a, a small business, a local business, any, anybody with a physical location uh, on the web. And so that thumbprint needs to match up on all of these various uh, websites so that Google can associate that with one cluster. Um, just because Google changed the, this is really, really important, just because Google changed uh, the way that they display this information does not mean that that concept is not still in place. Um, so, and if you see bad data keep popping up again and again and again, um, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. You're going you're to be chasing your tail 
Again, because Google is, is still pulling this data from all over the place. Um, and so if you see a, you know, if, you, if you've claimed a listing and you can't figure out why it's still showing you know, a bad phone number or why the website is wrong or whatever, um, or you see a duplicate popping up, um, it's because Google is still getting all of, you know, data from all of these guys. And so you've got to fix it, especially at the guys at the top of the food chain, locally as an info group, um, and potentially Axiom. Um, merging duplicates. Uh, I'm, I, this is a, a big question, like what happens? Uh, how do I do this? Um, there's, there's sort of two and a half ways to do it. Um, I'll go through those uh, here in the next couple slides. Um, but why do you want to take the time to merge? It's kind of like, uh, it's analogous to the canonicalized www, non-www versions on a website. Um, essentially, you don't want your citation equity, uh, your name, address, phone number equity, and your review equity to get split. You want those to consolidate into one listing so that that one listing will outrank you know, your competitors. Uh, it's also a terrible search experience for mobile searchers especially to see two listings that are more or less the same um, for a business while you're out there in the real world. Uh, creates confusion and it really you know, can drive them uh, to go to another business. In terms of mo merging duplicates, the white hat way, um, number one, I would try calling your AdWords Express rep. Uh, this used to be called Google Boost until yesterday. Um, so at, they actually have an 800 phone number you can call and if, you're, if you just tell them, hey, I'm really having trouble, these duplicates keep popping up or my listing's merged, um, you know, what, or I need to merge my listings, what can you do to help? Um, I'd be happy to advertise with you guys, blah, blah, blah. And then you can always cancel the account after a couple months um, if you don't want to keep spending money. Uh, the other thing you can do is use this report a problem link that's at the bottom of every place page um, and say uh, that middle selected thing says um, place has another listing. Uh, this can take a really long time. Um, so, uh, you know, although it's 100% white hat, you might not get anywhere for, you know, several, several months, if, if even then. Um, the sort of white hat way, and this is 100% white hat if you use it in the manner in which I'm describing it to you, um, but it can be used for nefarious means. Um, Google has a, a website called MapMaker uh, that they use uh, in other parts of the world especially, um, but it's just really coming into, into play in the US um, where they use the community to verify uh, edits to various places uh, out in the world. Um, so you can, you can think of MapMaker a little bit like Wikipedia for places. Um, you need a strong account if you want to get these, uh, these edits approved, but you can go in there um, and you can see this is a search for a local coffee shop in Portland. They've got four listings. Um, and if I were the manager for Barista, which is the name of the coffee shop, I would go in and say, hey, look, I'm the manager. I don't know where all this data came from, but this is the one listing that we need to show up um, on Google Maps. And uh, you know, the, typically the reviews on here are within like 24 or 48 hours as opposed to you know, three or four months if you use the report a problem button. Um, merging duplicates the gray hat way. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, there's a, a great post that Mike, blog, Mike Blumenthal blogged a couple of years ago uh, that lays out the steps as described by Google. Um, the reason this is gray hat is you're actually going to be creating a, du you're going to be claiming a duplicate listing um, in your account, but it's only for a temporary amount of time. Um, and if you do it the right way, uh, you're probably not going to get spam. You're, you're probably not going to get banned for spam. Basically, you want to remove, you want to strip all of the rich information, categories, website, description, all of that stuff. Strip it from one of the listings after you claim it. Wait 30 days until the actions and impressions are the same, and then you can remove it from your account. If you need to unmerge duplicates, uh, in a nutshell, you're trying to send really strong signals about, hey, this is a unique listing. Um, this should rank on its own. Um, these are the ways that I think uh, you know you can do that. Number one, get a KML file set up on your website. If you haven't heard that term before, uh, it stands for Keyhole Markup Language. Essentially, it is a sitemap of all of your locations. So instead of a sitemap of all your pages, it's a sitemap showing all of your locations with latitude and longitude coordinates. Really helps out with Google's trust uh, in place data. Um, obviously, you want to code your information in HCARD micro format if you can. Uh, just make sure Google can really lock into um, where that place is, lo is located. Um, if that doesn't work and after you verified with local leads and info group and it still hasn't worked in a couple of months, um, I would raise a stink in the forums and also raise a stink um, on popular websites and news outlets. Um, we've noticed, uh, coincidentally, um, that as soon as a major publication picks up a bug with Google Maps, it gets fixed in like 12 hours. Um, really strange how that works. Um, and in some cases, even um, blog posts uh, from some of us in the local search community will get the attention of Google. So really, you've got you've to raise, uh, raise the importance to Google of fixing this problem um, outside uh, the traditional forums 
if you really want something to happen quickly. Um, so the moral of the story, don't get cluster you know what it. Um, verify at the upstream data providers, uh, send a strong signal from your website, and use MapMaker um, if appropriate. All right, competitive research. What do we do now that Google stopped showing more about this place? Um, they stopped showing third-party reviews. How do we know, what, you know what, where to go? Um, this was the update from, I think, Thursday or Friday. Um, you can see you know, they're, no longer showing this, they're, they're no longer showing this more about this place uh, on place pages. Um, they're no longer showing actual snippets from reviews from third-party sources. Um, they are still showing a couple of, of sources that they're pulling from, but it seems like this number has gone dramatically down um, as a result. Don't be like Sarah Palin. Don't just see this and say, oh, they must have changed the algorithm. Um, and also, don't run around like a turkey with your head cut off, um, like this guy's about to do, saying, you know, what are we going to do? This is not an algorithmic update. I don't know how much more clear I can be about that. Um, this is my opinion. It may be an algorithmic update, but all the ranking data from the last week seems to be um, pretty constant. So you've got to just be smarter about how you go about gathering data. What are the opportunities? Keyword research. In local, you're, really much, you're, you're going much more after the head uh, search terms, whether that's head search terms plus a geo modifier, um, or if that's head search terms that Google thinks have a strong local intent. Um, the reason for that is that it's harder to control long tail searches in local. Um, Google has these category buckets that they put certain search terms into, um, and so you really need to nail those categories much more than the specific search terms. If you get outside of their sort of predetermined category buckets, the organic ranking factors are going to take over uh, as a much bigger role. So that's why I say in local, you really want to focus a little bit more on the head when you're talking about places rankings. Um, this is the best keyword tool that I know of for local search, uh, Google Insights, uh, where you can actually drill down that black arrow pointing uh, at the right side of the screen. You can actually drill down by geographic area uh, and get a sense for relative search volume um, after you've done your sort of standard keyword research using the AdWords tool or SEM Rush or whatever. Um, and again, you want to sort of pick and choose your battles uh, here. This is for, uh, I think, hair salon related terms. Um, and you can see hair salon is definitely the number one term in LA. Um, the second term being barber. And some of these other ones, hairdresser, you know, had very little search. So you'd really want to pick, you know, these head terms uh, when you're thinking about what categories to enter at Google Places. Um, the other thing you want to think about is where are the opportunities uh, in local? Um, when do local results show up? If you're behind your organic competitors you know, on a bunch of these head terms, you can actually do a better job than them uh, with optimizing for local and kind of leapfrog them uh, in the search results. Uh, so you want to know when, you know, first of all, where are you behind these guys? Second of all, are there local results being shown for that query? Um, and are local results especially being shown for generic queries, which have obviously much bigger search volume than the geo-modified ones? The implications of these last three, area, uh, these last three sort of bullet points um, vary greatly, though. Um, there are some reasons why Google just might not show local results. Uh, if they don't have enough uh, local intent in the search, for instance, if it's something like nutritionist uh, as opposed to restaurant, um, that might be a qualitatively different search where Google says, OK, nutrition information is pretty much constant no matter where you are in the country. Somebody's looking for a restaurant. They want to go somewhere near them tonight. Um, that might just be the case. They just don't show local results for certain queries. Um, the middle one is kind of important, uh, especially if you're not in doing U.S. optimization, if it's uh, you know, other countries in the world. Google has much weaker data signals. They have their, that spaghetti-looking local search ecosystem uh, is much simpler uh, in other countries. They don't have very strong data. And so um, just because they don't have very strong data doesn't mean that that search doesn't have local intent. If you do a really good job optimizing those signals that you're sending, um, giving them really good data, they might actually show a local, local result for that query. If you're in SEO or website design, um, Google probably isn't going to show local results. I think it's because they're nervous that it'll embarrass them, uh, because we will somehow spam them. Uh, that's just a decision they seem to have made a couple of years ago. So this is kind of my mental process when I'm looking at results for clients um, in terms of evaluating how savvy the competition is. Um, if, there is if there's a very strong competition and Google's showing local results, yeah, that's going to be a lot of work, but at least you know, you're, you know it's going to be productive. Um, if there's very strong signals and Google's not showing any local results, that query probably doesn't have local intent um, or you know, one of the other sort of weird decisions that they made uh, related to spam or, or algorithmic stuff. Um, the ones on the right-hand side, if there are weak signals from local, you know, regardless, it's a good opportunity uh, in, within places to rank really well. Um, but even if they're not showing local results uh, on weak signals, that could be an opportunity, again, to leapfrog your organic competitors. 
the criteria that you want to look at uh, in terms of competitive research, hopefully you guys um, know most of these factors already, and it, it's kind of a refresher, but links, uh, obviously important for everything with Google. Citations, that mention, those mentions of your name, address, and phone number. Uh, user reviews, really important, and a couple other factors um, that I'll point out shortly. In terms of links, um, it's mostly at the domain level when it comes to local search. Um, the reason is that small businesses you know, tend not to have very big websites. They're primarily the reason that Google introduced these things in the first place. Um, so you're really looking at, you know, in general, domain level uh, link metrics rather than page level. Citations and reviews, not only do you want a lot of them, but you want them from the right places. Um, link research, you know, use Open Site Explorer. I, I, do, uh, I use Yahoo right now. Uh, Yahoo's going away, and I use Open Site Explorer in, in an example here um, in, a, in a, about 10 slides, and I'll show you why Open Site Explorer is so great um, for local research. You're basically trying to answer the question, where does Google expect to see my business uh, listed or my client's business listed uh, in, in my industry? Rand did a great post. Um, you know, obviously, Google is no longer showing them more about this place for your competitors. Um, so Rand did a great post on, on Saturday about some uh, sort of special search strings that you can use. Um, to find uh, additional places to get cited, or these, these sort of hub places to get cited in particular industries. Darren Shaw has a great tool out. I think Darren's here, uh, if anybody has any questions for him about it, um, called the Local Citation Finder, um, which does a lot of this stuff uh, in an automated way. Um, it doesn't look at the organic results uh, aggregated. I think that's, that's this slide. Um, no, that's the co-citation one. It doesn't look at the organic rankings, uh, to my knowledge, uh, of um, strong industry portals. Um, so keep that in mind that this might be something you need to do sort of manually. Um, I literally just set up a spreadsheet for you know, kind of a, a representative sample of markets um, and seeing you know, which, which sites Google sees as the authoritative citation sources in a particular industry in all these various markets, tally them up, and those are my priorities for uh, where I need to get my clients uh, business information. These snippets and more details have gone away as a result of the place page update, but you can still use um, the places that Google's showing photos, uh, pulling photos in from third-party websites uh, as an indication of, okay, this is a very strong citation source uh, in this industry. Review analysis is basically the same thing. What are the sites that Google expects to see my business reviewed on? Um, there are a couple of special uh, opportunities or special kind of ranking characteristics uh, when it comes to reviews. A lot of these websites have a top 10 list or a best of. Um, this is Gaio and City Search. Um, and Google will still show these on place pages. Uh, and I think they do tend to take this into account for rankings uh, a little bit. So having a strong industry relevant uh, review volume uh, is still really important, a, a review, review profile. Um, and it's elite reviews, I think, are going to become more important. Uh, what, I mean, what I mean by elite reviews, people that leave a, a review for a lot of different businesses and people that have, have a lot of friends uh, in these um, sort of local social circles. Um, Google, as you probably know, uh, sort of rolled up this hot pot um, product into places about three months ago. We'll see where it goes uh, with respect to Google Plus now that that's out. Um, but we're already seeing, uh, if you have a, a friend in places or a friend in hot pot, um, you're already seeing what their ratings are showing up right underneath uh, the, the place page results. We're going to start to see more and more of this, I think, uh, with Google+. Plus. Um, and the reason you need you know, sort of elite level uh, people reviewing you is because you're going to get you know, a lot more of these uh, sort of you know, little 16 by 16 um, you know, face icons um, showing up if those people have a wider and wider social net. Um, let's see, what was the? Oh, you, and you can see here, uh, even though Google has stopped showing um, you know, the review snippets, uh, and some of the major uh, places they pull reviews from on the place pages, they're still showing them um, if you do, sometimes if you do a query uh, just for the business name. So a recovery search rather than a discovery search, um, you can sometimes pull, see where they're pulling these snippets from still within the organic or blended results. Um, in terms of elite reviewers, um, you know, sometimes uh, your elite reviewers might not actually share too much of your taste. Um, so this is my buddy Matt Brown from Portland. Um, he clearly has terrible taste in restaurants, which is mostly what I reviewed. Um, we don't agree on anything. Um, but you know, as again, as he's in my in my Google Plus network, um, I think as as Google evolves this sort of social uh, local social network that they're building out, um, you're going to want people uh, like Matt uh, who know a ton of foodies in Portland um, reviewing your business. He has not been interviewed by the Google Places team yet, um, unlike this guy. 
Um, so Google recently rolled out uh, a, a low, basically a local search directory in four markets, Portland, San Diego, uh, Madison, and Austin. Um, they're probably going to roll these out you know, in another 30 markets in the next year. Um, and they will feature who some of these primary reviewers are uh, on their blog. So if you're a small business in Portland or Austin or those other cities, um, you, know, you might think about contacting these people and say, hey, man, great, congratulations on getting featured on the Places blog. Um, I'd love to know what you think about my business. Would you mind coming in um, and checking it out? I'd be happy to spend some time with you. Um, you know, there, may be some, uh, there may be some algorithmic ways that um, present themselves once an API comes out for Google+. Plus. Um, to do this, but right now uh, there's only these four markets that Google's actually um, showing, featuring these people. Same thing is true on Yelp. Um, you know, Yelp's already integrating Facebook, um, and so you need these people with large social networks um, leaving reviews. Um, you're going to get a much higher sort of conversion rate if people see friends in their network. Um, and you guys probably already know about the elite status uh, that a lot of Yelpers have if they leave a ton of reviews. Um, so these are the people that you need uh, coming into your business. Um, I'll talk more about reviews and about. 12 minutes. Um, again, don't, don't pull a Sarah Palin and just think, oh, they changed the place page. Um, they must have changed the algorithm. Um, don't panic about that. Uh, the algorithm is still pretty much the same. You just have to be a little bit smarter about the way you um, do your local research. Uh, if you're a big business, what are some things you can do uh, to outrank the smaller ones? There are no longer any excuses uh, when it comes to blended local search. Um, large domains have an inherent advantage now uh, with blended search. Um, so don't give me any more of these excuses. Uh, it's a great opportunity for, for big brands. The number one thing you have to know, Google has got to be able to associate your website with your place page. Um, so you've got to follow the best practices for on-page optimization especially. You need a flat site architecture, hopefully two clicks uh, to a unique indexable page for each location that you operate, two clicks off your home page. If it's got to be three, it's got to be three. But don't just throw up a fancy JavaScript store locator on a subdomain and expect to rank in blended search. I see that all the time. You obviously need your address in HTML and hopefully HCard microformat. Um, this is a big one that small businesses don't take very good advantage of. Um, and on a you know, PR7 or PR8 website, um, you're going to have a lot better chance for this to really show um, some, some results. Use your geographic anchor text to link to those place pages. Um, don't just list the city name, uh, although that's better than nothing. Um, but city name plus product, uh, you know, within blog posts, within uh, articles that are on your site, et cetera, outside of your store locator, that can go a long way. And I mentioned this KML file earlier. This is really critical um, for big sites so that Google knows exactly where your locations are and they have that trust signal coming from this big domain. Um, I mentioned earlier, maybe uh, about 60 slides ago, um, I think you should submit, especially if you're a big brand, even if you're a little brand, submit your contact page or an individual location page within places. Uh, you're going to have a stronger geographic scent coming from that page. Um, and you're also going to have a higher conversion rate because people aren't going to need to search again once they get on your website for the right location. Um, they're going to be right on the page that they were looking for. Um, don't worry about the page authority uh, so much. Again, local search is a little bit more about domain authority um, in terms of rankings. Uh, you've got to decide on a corporate business name and take advantage of those two major data aggregators, Locally's and Infogroup. You've got to square your data away with those guys. Um, again, otherwise you're going to get all of these duplicates uh, coming in, um, and you're just going to be you're going to be bleeding out a lot of that sort of citation equity um, that you hopefully are trying to build up. Um, and the other thing is, spend some time. If you've got, I would say, over a thousand locations, spend some time reaching out directly to those other prominent verticals um, that Google's looking for citations on. Um, see if they'll take a direct feed from you. A lot of, a lot of them will. Um, they're looking for, for good data. Reviews. This is a big one. Um, I've worked with a couple of national clients um, that you know, have done a good job with this, and a couple of national clients that haven't done a good job with this. Um, you've got to make sure that the store managers know how important it is, not only that you know, people talk about them well, but about the importance that they actually talk about them well online. Um, it's, a new, it's a new ecosystem, it's a new business uh, for a lot of these guys. Um, you know, they don't really know search engines the way that you guys do. So you've got to get buy-in not only from you know, the VP of marketing if you're working at a big company, but from these individual store managers. Um, you've got to get them to understand how important it is uh, to get these reviews. So work with your, I, you know, this isn't my area of expertise, but work with your communications team about you know, point of sale, reminders, loyalty programs via email, that type of thing at a franchise level. It's absolutely critical um, to get that buy-in from the store managers uh, 
to get these reviews. Sorry. Um, so this is a, a, a term that I mentioned very early on, centroid bias. Hopefully you guys know basically how close to the city center is your business. Um, it's funny, in other, in other countries, I was just at a, in Brazil at, at Expo last week. Um, in other countries, the centroid bias is not nearly as strong uh, as it is here in the US. This was a search for family lawyers in Sao Paulo, which is a 20 million person city. Uh, search for family lawyers in Portland, which is a 2 million person city. And yet the centroid is much tighter uh, here in the US. So this is a very common question. You know, if I'm located either, you know, fairly far, t you know, towards the suburbs or actually in a suburb, how do I rank for a, a search in a major metropolitan area when Google has this centroid bias? My advice is pay attention to the outliers. Um, hopefully, if there are outliers in your market, that means Google is already sort of drawing a little bit bigger radius. But in other markets, um, and potentially, uh, potentially even in other industries, um, pay attention to who's able to rank uh, despite being pretty far from the centroid. So this is a, uh, I just picked a couple of random searches. Um, this was a search for a DUI lawyer in Athens, Georgia, which is a reasonably small market, but a pretty competitive search term. Um, and you can see this guy is you know, totally outranking his competitors um, with the A push pin, despite being you know, seven miles outside uh, the city center. You can see this is the city center. Um, if you just type in Athens, Georgia, or whatever city you're looking for into Google Maps, that's the centroid. Um, so come up with a spreadsheet, and I think you know some of the some of the uh, tool, some of the new features of Open Site Explorer that Rand just demonstrated, um, you know, can go a long way towards helping you do this. This is I pulled all of this data from Open Site Explorer. You want to see where they're ranking in maps uh, as opposed to blended search. That's the first two columns on the left. Um, but the main the main points are in the middle. So you know how many inbound links do they have with the uh, this is basically stuff from the local search ranking factors survey. How many incoming links do they have with uh, ge geography in the name, uh, with product and service in the name? How many reviews do they have, et cetera? And basically create a spreadsheet and see what factors these guys are doing well on. You can see this guy um, has, I think, eight links. Uh, where is it? Eight, eight inbound links uh, with the city of Athens uh, in the anchor text. Um, none of his competitors have anything. So to me, in a, in a less competitive market, um, that seems to be the number one factor that's driving things. Um, he's also got way more citations than any of his competitors. Um, this is basically the number of results Google returns for his business name and phone number. Um, and then third party reviews, you can see this guy uh, down here in the fifth slot, Jim Smith Law. Um, despite having uh, one linking root domain with no anchor text, um, he does have six total reviews, um, which in this market uh, is sort of an order of magnitude higher uh, than anyone else. This is a little bit uh, more competitive area, um, probably an equally competitive industry, but Portland, obviously a bigger city than Athens, Georgia. Um, tanning salons, obviously, we've had no summer, so a lot of people are looking for this right now. Um, you can see that the, you know, the, the second result here in this case uh, is like seven miles south of town. How are they doing that? They have something like 150 reviews uh, when their competitors have just a handful, uh, typically. So, um, the two biggest things that I've seen if you're trying to overcome the centroid bias, um, it may vary in your market, um, but in general, in, in the you know, hundreds of markets that I look at every year, uh, incoming geographic anchor text is something I'd focus on and getting a order of, an order of magnitude of reviews higher than any of your competitors. That can help you overcome that centroid bias uh, that Google tends to display. With reviews, uh, you've got to, again, you've got to make sure that, that feedback becomes part of the everyday business process whether you're a big company with, with franchise managers or an agency working on behalf of a client, you've got to educate them on the importance of following up with customers. Um, know the rules for incentives. So uh, basically, Yelp doesn't want you doing anything to encourage reviews. Most of the other sites are pretty much fine with you sending an email saying, hey, please leave us a review on the site as long as you're not offering anything in return. Some of them um, will even accept a review with a financial incentive or a discount or something like that. Um, the rules on this are changing, uh, even at Google. Uh, Google actually offered incentives itself for people to leave reviews in Portland as part of their Hot Pot campaign. Um, and so, you know, just, I wouldn't encourage that, but you can probably play a little bit closer to the line with this than you can with links. Um, you know, the main thing that you want is ethical reviews left by real customers. Don't go out and use Mechanical Turk um, or something like that. Google will spot that pretty quickly. Uh, you want to grease the, grease the wheels or grease the, the rails rather um, for you know to make it as easy as possible for people to leave reviews. I'd really recommend that you segment out your Gmail customers and your Yahoo customers um, 
and if anybody has a Facebook email address uh, yet, uh, or when they do, segment those people out um, and say, okay, well, if, if people have a Gmail account, we're gonna send them only to our place page uh, when we ask them to leave a review. They're already gonna be logged in. They know that process is gonna be easy. Yahoo the same way. Um, for all of your other customers, consider how easy it would be for somebody who doesn't have an account on a particular website to leave a review. There are a couple of them out there that will let anybody with a Facebook account um, log in with Facebook uh, without having a native account on, their, on that particular site. So Avvo and City Search are two really good examples. Avvo is a, a legal website, if you haven't heard of them. Um, and City Search, everybody's hopefully heard of them. Um, but basically, you know, make sure it's easy for people to leave a review. Um, don't make them you know, go through a three-step three process to create an account first. And consider the syndication value of review sources. This is still important. Again, even though Google is not showing reviews on the review snippets on place pages, they're still looking at these other sources. Um, and so you want to consider who's actually allowing Google uh, to look at them. Yelp in the past has been very, very restrictive about um, letting anyone uh, look at their reviews, including Google. City Search, on the other hand, says, yeah, come on and take our stuff. We've got an API for you. We're going to make it simple. Um, so look at, how, you know, look at how friendly these sites are towards other sites picking up their reviews. All right, the last one, and I've got about six minutes. This is great. Um, if I don't have a physical location, uh, what can I do? Um, I actually, you know, the writing's been on the wall for several years. This is a post I wrote in October of 2007, um, you know, talking about the, the problem with local search. Uh, the real problem is that search engines are not returning results that people want to see. Uh, I think Google has realized that. Um, they're showing now actual physical locations with place pages rather than websites just showing other search results. Um, now, they're, they're not entirely altruistic, uh, in my opinion. Um, Google knows that mom and pops don't have huge budgets, but if you run a major media site or you're a national brand uh, who doesn't have, you know, who has distributors rather than uh, captive locations, you're probably going to have more AdWords dollars to spend, um, and so we're going to force you further and further down the page organically. So you have to advertise um, in paid search. This is, I just think that's, you know, that's the way Google looks at it. Um, again, there's an altruistic reason for doing it: help small businesses get some visibility. Um, there's a financial reason for doing it too. But basically, you've got, to re you've got to recognize Google just does not want you in these local results, especially on a mobile device where people are much more sensitive to physical location. So what can you do? Paid search, you know, kind of a no-brainer. But um, you know, Google, I think, is, uh, you know, if you look at this search result, um, you know, the paid search listings have star ratings just like the, well, for some reason, the star ratings aren't showing up. So the, the paid search ratings now have uh, reviews. They have site links underneath. Um, so max out whatever you can possibly do um, with uh, your paid search advertising campaigns. And you know this is a very competitive search, hotels in San Francisco. The clicks are going to be expensive, but you are getting some pretty good positioning here and pretty good sort of uh, you know, snippet-like uh, data showing up um, as part of that. Great apps. Uh, you know, again, Google, their mobile, their mobile play has been OK so far. Um, I don't think that places as nearly as important uh, you know, on the mobile device has nearly the same market share that they have in, or in desktop search. Um, you look at sites like Yelp, um, you look, even Bing's got a great local product out on the, on the uh, iPhone um, and other mobile devices. So, you know, get in on the ground floor with apps. Um, put, your, put your dollars there because mobile search is getting, you know, more and more and more market share uh, with every, each passing day. Um, and if you can beat Google to the punch in mobile, um, I think that that uh, is a good strategy. Steve Jobs thinks that you know, the future of search on mobile devices is going to be apps. Um, and so Apple clearly is headed in that direction. Uh, I'd encourage you guys to as well. Absurdly good content. Uh, you know, not to go all Matt cuts on you, but um, this really can work uh, in local search. Um, uh, this is, again, a very, very competitive search term, restaurants in San Francisco. And yet, above the seven pack, uh, we get the top 100 restaurants uh, page from uh, the San Francisco Chronicles website, SFGate. Um, and so this is clearly a really popular piece of content uh, with San Franciscans and everybody else in the Bay Area. Um, probably gets a ton of links from local foodie bloggers and that kind of thing. Um, so you know, all hope is not lost. If you really do a great job um, with producing content, you can still outrank the seven pack. Uh, obviously, that's going to be you know, pretty hard to do. It's going to take a lot of work. Um, something that might take still some considerable work um, but you know, might bring in a little bit, uh, little bit lower return, little, uh, but still a return, um, is revising your site architecture and using micro formatting. So 
Um, you can see in this search result, this is actually below the seven pack, unfortunately, uh, if, you, if you operate one of these um, types of sites. But uh, you know, there are two, two companies here, Yelp and City Search, that are doing a really good job uh, with their, um, their markup. So uh, a couple things to keep in mind, though. Um, they are single listings. They are not search results. So these are individual business listings um, that are showing this uh, additional markup um, and getting these additional sort of eyeball click-throughs, presumably, from the star ratings beneath them. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, typically you would set up a site uh, such that your, your site architecture rewards sort of the category pages rather than the product pages. Um, with respect to local search, uh, you might consider sending a lot more link juice uh, right off your homepage to specific businesses uh, to get them this kind of treatment in the search results rather than your directory pages. And then once people come into the site, uh, you know, consider sending them to uh, a couple of different sources. Um, in terms of what the formatting looks like to get these star ratings and the, the prices, um, you know, microformats.org, and I think Stefan Weitz is speaking about schema uh, later in the conference. So um, both of those should, should work to get results like this. Um, as I mentioned, keep in mind those are single listings. They're not uh, category uh, pages. Um, this might offer a commercial opportunity for your site without selling links. You can say, hey, look, we're going to feature your business uh, right off of our home page. And you know, we're going to do our best to get you as much traffic as we can directly from Google. Um, this is, you know, you're not selling a link to the website. You're only uh, doing things on your own website. Uh, I don't see any violation of, of guidelines there. Uh, this is just an aside. This is the same search result I just uh, showed um, with the, with the uh, micro formats. Um, but Google offers uh, now ranking uh, number 10 organically, um, which might be something that the FTC uh, would want to look at. Um, you know, Google's basically taking more and more uh, real estate uh, on the page, as I said earlier. So this is, you know, in the organic website, uh, in the organic results, Google, a Google property ranking for a broad phrase, um, pretty interesting. Uh, the last uh, strategy I would say uh, that might work um, if you don't have a physical location, do your best to confuse Google about the intent of a particular search. Um, play in other verticals and try to get Google, again, not to think of that as a local search, but hey, there's a really popular video, or a really popular news item, or a really popular image, or product search, as I mentioned, something else uh, that relates to that query that is not local. Um, and to do this, you really want to prioritize your keywords. Uh, here's a search for hair salons. You can see it returns a, a standard seven pack. Hair salon, uh, though, returns uh, images. So um, do your best to send Google really strong signals in other verticals especially if they're already somewhat confused about what kind of search it is, um, and try to, again, you know, rank above the local results uh, if you don't have physical locations. That's really your only uh, option because Google, again, in places just wants you know, brick and mortar uh, stores. Um, so again, you basically want to reverse that, um, that mental diagram uh, I, I spoke about earlier um, for place-related businesses. Um, essentially, if, if there's a strong signal uh, and they're showing local results, you're screwed. Uh, and that link incidentally points to uh, a great post by Andrew Shotland uh, from a couple years ago uh, telling the Yellow Pages, look, this is, this is what it's going to be. Um, you just got to face up and, and deal with the facts. Um, so I think that's about, I've got 50 seconds left, but I'll end a little bit early, uh, just talk about a couple of great resources. Um, Mike Blumenthal I've mentioned like three or four times in the presentation. Um, he's, in my opinion, like the best, uh, he, he's got his ear the closest to the ground. Um, when it comes to Google Places. He's in the forums all the time. Um, he knows what the issues are. He knows where the pain points are. So read Mike's blog assiduously. Um, I would also encourage you to read the local search section on Bill Slosky's SEO by the Sea, including this patent, uh, that ugly looking link at the bottom, is the link to Google's most recent blended place search patent. Um, so really look at the factors that they spell out in there. Um, there might be some nuggets for you uh, as you read and do that kind of research. Uh, a couple more blogs to look at. And one final thing, uh, just a very quick plug. that I have no financial benefit from this, um, but uh, I started a, an initiative about six months ago called Review Wednesday. Uh, the idea is it's kind of like Follow Friday, but for small businesses. Um, so basically, if you uh, every Wednesday, uh, I'd love it if you guys could leave a review for your favorite small business uh, anywhere in the world. Tweet it with hashtag RWX. And at the end of each month, we do a drawing either for a gift certificate to that business uh, or a donation to a charity of your choice. So help spread the word about how important it is to leave reviews for small businesses. Um, and it should start with us. It should start with search marketers, because um, we're the ones in the know. So thanks a lot for your time, and looking forward to your questions.